I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's show. How are you? I hope you're great. Um, January is... January is kicking. Uh, we're halfway through, which is wild. Um... But, you know, whatever. I'm here for it. January's not my fave. So just kind of trucking through to make it through January, right? Doing a thing called January. You seen that meme? Anyway, wow. Hi, welcome to the show. I am in a mood, so <laughs> I hope you can <gasps> bear with me here. Anywho, um, I'm going to talk to you guys about long arming today. I know I've kind of talked about it before in it like one of the early episodes, but I want to talk about it again because I've noticed a trend. I don't know if it's a trend. I don't know. Anyway, I've noticed that people dropping quilts off um, to be long-armed or, you know, whether it's at the house with my mom or if it's at the quilt shop, um, people are really skimping on the requirements for fabric on their quilts. And this may sound complainy and, you know, I'm going to run that risk because this is just my situation. This is my life. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen. I mean, I hope you do so that you know um, how to help your long armor help you. But I digress. Anyway, so skimping on the backing. So what that does is... Well, first of all, (laughs) let's back up. That was me reversing. Um, So mostly, most, from what I can tell, most long armors require at least four to five inches on either side or on all sides of your quilt um, for backing. So say your quilt top is 72 by 90, then your backing needs to be like at least 80 by 98, right? Preferably larger, preferably like, you know, 10 to 12 inches more. So whatever that would be, 82 or 84 by by 100 or 104, that, you know, 108 inch backing is perfect for that. But anyway, so at least four to five inches extra all the way around. And same with batting, make your batting, the same size relatively as your backing. It doesn't have to be the exact same size, but close because we need that space. So anyway, so that's the, typically the requirement is that extra four to five inches, if not more. And if you've never seen how that happens, that's probably why you think you can get away with it. So the way that the quilts get loaded onto the machines whether it's red snappers or you pin it directly to the uptake canvas or you have zippers, you have to have space for those things. So if you only give two inches on the top and bottom, that's it. You have no more space for, you don't have space for the zippers. You don't have space for the pins and it gets dangerous, right? And I mean dangerous because if the needle hits those things, the zipper and the pins, that causes the needles to break. It causes the machine to go out of timing. It's not safe for your long armor because things can go really badly, but also it endangers your quilt, right? You just spent so much time and money on creating a quilt top. Why would you risk the danger of it being ruined because you didn't do the right thing to prepare it for long arming? So, I'm just really here to strongly encourage that if you're taking your quilt to be long-armed or you're sending it out, that you ask for clarification on requirements, that you look, you know, for that information from your long-armer, if they've sent it to you or if it's available on their website or whatever the, the process is, that you're following those guidelines because, you know... We need that to ensure that your quilt is going to come together as perfectly as possible, right? So 
Not only do you need space at the top and bottom for the zippers and the pins or the red snappers or, you know, just to be pinned in general, um, you need room on the sides too because whether you use the, you know, the clamps, the individual clamps, or I've seen like, and at the quilt shop we have these magnet, they're like long skinny strips, but they're magnetic. And so the one goes under on underneath the backing, the other one goes on the top and they're connected to Velcro straps that then get tightened um, along the sidebars to pull that backing taut on the sides so that there's no wrinkles, there's no folds in the back. Um, and so if you've only got two inches, there's no way that the machine can stitch all the way to the edges of your quilt top without running into those securing apparatuses, right? Apparatuses? Apparati? Whatever. Pfft, I don't know. Anyway, however your quilt is secured onto the frame, um, if you don't have enough width, then that just really makes it really extra difficult for uh, your long armor to make sure that it's on there safe. So I just... I just keep seeing it over and over again and it's like, oh, we can make it work, but it's just that much more work for the long armor to be able to attach it correctly and make sure that everything is quilted nicely and that the top quilt top can sit, you know, as flat and smooth as possible. So please uh, just <laughs> follow your the requests of your long armor and it to you may seem excessive but to us it's a big deal it's the difference between being able to quilt your quilt and not being able to quilt your quilt so there's that piece of it and that's a huge piece of it right um you can add le if you don't want to buy more backing or you can't get more backing then add leaders that is um always an option that's if you don't know what that is, that is sewing extra strips on the top and bottom and sides of your backing to make sure that it is big enough for loading. It doesn't mean that those parts are going to be quilted necessarily. Um, you know, if the quilt top does sit slightly outside the backing, then it will go into the leaders, but that's up to you to make sure that your, your quilt top and your quilt back are appropriately sized. And so but leaders are always an option. And, you know, I'm sure most long armors would offer that as an extra fee because it's a service and it's time that it, it takes time to do that. But, um, just working with your, working with your long armor to ask what's the best option. I don't have enough backing or I don't want to buy more backing or I don't want to piece my backing. That's fine. And your long armor will tell you what, their idea is or what their options there are for you on working with them but leaders is always an option I've you know I've had to sew leaders to things a few times you know myself just because I'm like oh I only have this much backing and it fits the quilt top perfectly but it's not enough for loading and so then I just you know stitch stitch some pieces down the side just to make sure I've got something for the clamps and the, the pins to hold on to and then it just comes right off. You can even just baste stitch it on so that it's not, just do like a running stitch so that it's not, you know, on there too securely. And that way you can easily um, take it off. But that is another way that you can add the extra inches that you need. I, I tell people always six inches all the way around. So taking your width and adding 12 taking your quilt top length and adding 12 and that's how much backing and batting you need and again it's a generalization because not everything is going to always be exactly that sized for that but if it's close then that's just helpful another tip or sometimes a requirement of some places is to stay stitch your quilt tops um, I say if you have borders, um, it's not as big of a deal because it's a one piece of fabric, but, um, 
or you know maybe one seam but it still helps keep all the seams together if you stay stitch all the way around the edge so and if you don't know what that is it's just a straight stitch that's about an eighth of an inch in from the the outside edge all the way around your quilt top and that just ensures any seams that are touching the edges are going to be held together so that they don't pop open in quilting because I've seen it happen where you know a, a d pattern the seams go all the way to the edges and there's no border and the it maybe wasn't caught that the seam was not quite finished or it had come undone at some point and that seam instead of being stitched together and you know laying flat it's a little bit open and the foot will catch it and then stitch that part of one part of the seam open so then that requires your long armor to go back through and pick out that part of the design and get everything laying flat and you know having to babysit that piece of your quilt and so instead of that you know just taking 10 minutes to stay stitch your top will really reduce any extra tricky work that your long armor will have to do and I'm making it seem like long armors might be um, unwilling to do extra work and that's not true I mean you can work with your long armor and ask them for these things like hey can you stay stitch my top can you do these things and for, I'm sure for an extra fee those things are available to you if you didn't do it but I think if you're going to make a quilt then probably you know you can do these little extra steps to just help the process go a lot smoother um, for yourself and for your long armor I mean it's a relationship right hopefully you're not just taking one quilt to one long armor and moving all about but that you're developing a relationship with your long armor it helps the long armor know what you want on your quilts and if you're the kind that just drops them off and says do whatever you want I mean that's a playground and that's a good time for a long armor <laughs> but if we don't know you that is so tricky it's like oh my gosh what if they hate what I pick I've had that stress more than a few times because, you know, it's been a new client or maybe somebody that my mom has worked with and maybe she's out of town and I'm doing the quilting and maybe they wouldn't have picked what I picked or maybe my mom wouldn't have picked what I picked because although we do have very similar styles, we're still different people and we still see things slightly differently. And so, you know, there's always that fear that I'm going to do something that the client isn't going to like and you know we stand by our work and so we'll if the client hates it we'll redo it but it's just nice to have that relationship and and trust build that trust with each other so that you know beautiful work can be created and so I think you know just really working with your long armor to understand what they need from you and what you're going to get from them is really important in this whole process and I mean I love you know we have so many repeat and consistent clients that bring us stuff and you know some more than others but the ones that come back over and over again is just so nice like I love seeing I love seeing them. I love talking to them. I love quilting their things because I have a relationship with these people and it feels special. Like I'm helping this piece of work that you created come to life. And so, you know, speaking from that side of things, it is important to know that, you know, to trust that when you're bringing me a quilt that um, it's going to be ready so that I can do my magic, right? You've done yours and now it's my turn to do mine. But if I have to nitpick and do all these little silly menial tasks just to be able to quilt your quilt, I mean, I'd rather not, you know. But again, like I said, it's about communication. So talk to your long armor about those things. And, um, you know, it's, it's, tricky out there too because some long armors will do so many things and some long long armors will do very little things and so it's about finding 
who and what fits with your style and, and your aesthetic, but it's also about honoring their process and what they're offering. Um, cause not everybody is going to just do all the same things. It's still an art. It's still a craft and not everybody quilts, not everybody crochets, not everybody, you know, woodworks. It's, it's still in that realm of open creativity. And so, you know, I'm just here to, just here to lay down the facts <laughs> for you guys. Just make it easier on your life as a quilter because, you know, there's, there's just little tips and tricks. I think I keep picking up that ultimately are saving my time and my sanity. And so, you know, this is just one of those areas where I keep, because I do it all the time, I long arm literally six days a week. Well, I shouldn't say literally because we don't long arm every single day at Sweet Pea, but you know, it's a lot. It's almost every single day. It's almost, you know, it's at least four days of the week. So that being said, like I'm around it all the time, all the time. And the more I notice these little things, the more I'm like, gosh, if this person had just taken five minutes to check over their seams or taken two seconds to literally look at their quilt top, they would have noticed this thing that is now causing huge problems for me on the long arming end. And so, like I said, I know this sounds complainy, but ultimately it's to help you help your long armor and to help you as a long armor. Like if you are one, you know, we can get lazy if we're doing all the work ourselves. I, I guess I should only speak for myself, but I can just be like, uh, I don't need to do that. I'll just figure it out later. Or, you know, when it comes to like stay stitching or, you know, making sure the leaders are nice and even and, I can get lazy with my own quilts because I'm like, well, I'm the one doing it, so I don't care. But then I'm always like, oh, I wish I would have, you know, I wish I would have done the stay stitching or I wish I would have just made sure that my backing was big enough. And so I'm learning from the process myself, but I'm also learning from other people requesting the service or, you know, providing the service for other people. So, you know, it's just my two cents. Um, like I said, it's about communication, talking to your long armor, asking them what their requirements are so that you know what to do. And it really, that helps the relationship that builds the trust that is needed for that relationship. And so I know it feels good when, you know, our clients drop things off and everything's prepped and ready to go because they listened to us and they followed our requests. And it's just like, oh, thank you so much. It makes it 10 times easier to do the job that you're asking us to do. And it makes it, I think, more worth your time too, because you're, you're going to get your quilt back in a timely manner with less added fees or with less complications because you've taken that time to make sure that it's done properly. So thank you to those of you who do that for your long armor. Um, and thank you to those of you who are going to start doing that for your long armor. It makes a world of difference. And if we're going to continue this community and growing it and shaping it, then I think that communication is is going to be vital in moving everything forward and, and inspiring new quilters because, you know, nothing can discourage somebody faster than feeling like they're not being heard or feeling like their, their services or their time isn't valued. So just think about that. Like if you were in your long armor shoes and you kept getting quilts or yeah, kept getting projects that just weren't quite finished all the way or weren't quite handed to you in, you know, in a manner that is, that you've requested, it can be super frustrating. So just a little FYI for you out there as you continue making your gorgeous, gorgeous quilts in 2023. And I just want to bring this energy into this year of, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And it's a reminder for myself. It's a reminder for you. You know, I love this community and I want it to grow and I want it to change in ways that 
are more beneficial to, to the people in it. So this is one way that we can do this. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all I have for you today on this gorgeous January day. And, um, I will see you guys next week with a super cool guest. Um, and that's it. I love you. Bye.